And the word was made flesh. Science has caught up with this. Sound by the pound. Surprising discovery hints sonic waves carry mass. Well, the Bible tried to tell us that the word was made flesh. So let's decide to find out today how to define life. Like we're looking for life on Mars. What is this word was made flesh and what exactly is life? A few uh, screenshots here and a slideshow and we'll be right through real quick. My average retention is about four minutes on a video, <laughs> but my videos are like 10, 15 minutes long. So I'm asking for you to take a deep breath and uh, persevere to the actual end of the video so you get the full picture of what I'm presenting. And I have a headache, so I'm trying to keep my head warm and I have to wear reading glasses now. Congratulations. Yay. Boo. On to the lesson today. What's life? And the word was made flesh. How is science catching up? And what did the Bible have to say? We'll see how it all ties together once we get to the end. Stay with me. So sound by the pound, right? Science, Scientific Americans publishing an article from an astrophysics Facebook page. Uh, from physics.org, there's an article, Does Light Experience Time? Well, photons don't experience any time at all. It's emitted and might exist for hundreds of trillions of years. But for the photon, there's zero time. And you can look that up. I'm giving these screenshots with plenty of details where if you are very interested, you could go look it up for yourself. If you want me to spoon feed you every little bit of detail, these are going to be several hour long videos. I don't have the attention span for that either. So let's get through this quick. You could chew on some fat and go do some research after if you're actually interested. So here we go. Next one. Uh, does light experience time? Physics.org, their mobile site. A uh, quick review, if you could travel at a constant acceleration of 1G, you could cross billions of light years in a single human generation. So does light experience time? This article is um, a lengthy one. Light doesn't experience time as we do as a human. So light is outside of the constraints of this 3D time-space continuum. The photons, which make up light, don't have to follow the same exact rules as we do, the way we understand and experience it. They get to behave different. And sound has weight. Not only does sound have weight, light has weight. Light is either particles or... Um, waves and this wave can transfer these particles can transfer because they have weight there's this in the screenshot there's this gizmo in the background uh, i'm sorry it's a poor screenshot but it's a gizmo not attached to these neon tubes and these neon tubes were being passed by it and the neon tubes were lighting up all by themselves like magic but it was that it was an invisible spectrum of mass from one container to another, from one um, contraption to another, where we didn't see it transferring, but it went nonetheless. The energy has mass. E equals mc squared. Yeah, light has mass. Sound has mass. Wavelengths have mass. Particles have mass. This I thought was interesting. There's a range of electromagnetic wavelengths seen uh, with the human eye, but there's a wide range of wavelengths not able to be detected by the naked eye. And here's a composite of NASA footage. I thought that was fascinating. You can see the light of the sun and other spectrums that you don't normally see with your glasses on, right? That's fascinating to me. Other spectrums, variables, different hues, hues of man, oh, humans. <laughs> I know, you're like, it's all conjecture. What is this? No, bear with me. So here we go, back to the original premise of the first screenshot. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, his light, 
right? Full of grace and truth. But the word was made flesh. What is the word, the logos? What is the flesh? Flesh. Let's get into the word and flesh a little bit more. Stay with me. I'm going fast. I know, I know. Stay with me. In the tr book of Genesis, there is described a tree of life. It was there in the Garden of Eden with the knowledge of good and evil tree. It was there in the same orchard. But this tree of life was blocked by cherubim after Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the knowledge tree because Yahweh didn't want them staying alive forever in their new fallen state. He couldn't allow that. So he put cherubim to protect that tree. There's two cherubim around the mercy seat and the Ark of the Covenant isn't there. The mercy seat is where Jesus sits, the high priest. The tree of life. What is life? The tree of life. Let's go. It's Eitz Chaim. Tree of life. They also refer to the Torah as the tree of life. The wooden poles that the parchment wraps around. We call it a book, but it's really a scroll. The tree of life. Let's look up the vocabulary. What is life? When you want to see life, what do you do when you're depressed and feeling blue? You get outside and you look at things that you know have energy, water within them. They're active. They're, they're growing. What do we look, f what are we looking for on other planets? Fresh flowing water. That's a sign of life, sign of life. To be alive, what is that? To be revived, to be quickened from sickness, discouragement, fainteness, from death, to be quickened. Remember, quickened, that's going to come up soon, to be quickened. On Yom Kippur, this year, 2019, Yom Kippur is October 8 and 9, 2019. It's an annual holiday for the Jews. It's when they consider... That one day a year, they have to do their their best and fast for 24 hours and become like angels, spiritual beings, not bothered by the physicality of this world, to stand upright in the synagogue, to wear white, to stand upright before the Holy of Holies, to stand upright before the living God, to stand upright before the high priest and wear white. Keep with me. Yom Kippur has uh, a reference to the book of Jonah. They read the book of Jonah. Yeshua said, Jesus said, when he comes back, that he's referencing the book of Jonah there in the New Testament when he's talking to his disciples, trying to give them a clue because they kept bugging him what's happening now and what's happening in the near future. And when you're coming back, one of the signs he says, the story of Jonah. Now we know Jesus was buried the same amount of time Jonah was swallowed by the fish. But here, keeping on referencing to Jonah, stays alive in the annual ceremony of Yom Kippur, the one time a year this is always read. It has to do with being the high priest entering the Holy of Holies. One person, once a year, can do this. The high priest, it's important that the high priest is involved reading the book of Jonah. On Yom Kippur, the closing of the gates happens. The closing of the gates on Yom Kippur, oh, like the wedding feast of the lamb, the door is closed and nobody can be a guest anymore because it's time to start the wedding feast. Time's up. The guests have arrived. The bride has arrived. Nobody else can enter. And then the bride returns with Christ back to earth after the wedding feast is over. Hmm. And where the, here is where I'm like, the book of life is really the scroll of life, the Torah of life, the teachings of life, the word of life, Jesus. But every year, our book of life, our, our scroll of life, our inclusion in the Torah, the teachings, our association with life, it's sealed. We're sealed by Christ and risen up on a special day in our new future. 
candle has to burn. The flame has to be burned through Yom Kippur, the special candle. But I'm not even going to talk about a special candle. The lamp stands in the Holy of Holies that are always lit, one for each church. But let's keep going. The Torah scrolls on Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur are removed from the ark. What's the ark? The earth where the saints that get called up live. The ark is the earth where, the, where, for example, Noah's ark kept the few humans and all the animals and whatnot safe during the flood. And the ark um, in the synagogue has the, the commandments, the rod of Aaron, the sample of manna, the bread of life, Jesus, the commandments, the word of God written in stone. Whose stone? The cornerstone is Jesus. Um, that rod of Aaron, the budding rod of Aaron, the branch. Uh, Judea, Israel, the branch that will never die again. Also on Yom Kippur, here's again just a reminder. They have extra services on Yom Kippur, and the story of Jonah is reviewed. It's the only day of the year that has five prayer services. Five, a number of God, the closing of the gates, right? Final chance. <laughs> the reason they have to fast on Yom Kippur, it's a serious prohibition that Everyone has to fast. And I asked the rabbi on this website, the atonement process of fasting, I was like, does the high priest have to skip eating as well? And the rabbi says, yes, the high priest has to skip eating as well. Well, the last supper with the apostles, Jesus said that was the last time he was going to have bread and wine until the marriage feast of the lamb. He started a fast before he was crucified. He started a fast. This was the last time he ate. So he had his last meal. He was sacrificed as a scapegoat. And he's not eating again to the marriage supper of the lamb. So he's having a fast, just like you're supposed to do on Yom Kippur. The day before, he ate with the disciples. And it was a feast meal, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Eating together with family and friends. Yes. Set the table beautifully. They took a long time. The disciples set up the table for them. They were making it special. They kneel in synagogue on Yom Kippur because normally the high priest and everybody, you don't kneel in synagogue. But remember how Jesus was washing the feet of everybody before that special meal? He knelt to do that. He stooped down to do that. The high priest is never supposed to stoop down and kneel down like that, being in submission to another human being. So, oh, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, prostrated himself during the service. He was conducting a service there with the meal and the blessing and the washing of the feet. Jesus was doing a mitzvah in a physical form, acting out a religious service, the service, the ceremony, the moedim, um, honoring his holy father, our holy father, the living God. And it's a new moon over Yom Kippur. Isn't there that thing? Nobody knows the day or the hour. Well, in the new moon, until witnesses confirm the new moon, you don't know which day you're on. You don't know which hour you're on until the confirmations are met by two witnesses. So this new moon event happens. And then afterwards, to confirm, the morning after, the town and people go to the two witnesses did you see something? You describe it. Okay, we're putting you away. You come here. This other guy, you describe it. If their two witnesses match, then it's confirmed what day it is. The two witnesses come in the book of Revelation after the rapture of the bride of Christ because they have to confirm what happened in the moon the night before. And the next Jewish holiday after this, Sukkot, is four days away. Sukkot, tabernacles. Jesus will dwell among us for a thousand years. Four days away, four of something. Uh, days, weeks, years, 
Times are condensed and expanded. Photons don't experience time the way we experience time. Light doesn't experience time the way we experience time. Science is finally proving that. So, so cool. Four days away. Well, scripture says the great tribulation will be cut short or no flesh will remain. So three and a half years instead of four years fully to the next holiday where Jesus tabernacles. So from Yom Kippur, to Sukkot, four full days, but the time has to be shortened or nobody would survive. That's suspicious to me, wouldn't you think? If you knew all this stuff and you're reading these things today like I did, you would be having flashbulb moments. Now, here in Perry Stone's book, rabbis teach there are 365 days in a solar year, and the phrase, the Satan, Hasatan, told us 364 in Gematria. When subtracting 364 from 365, it leaves the number one. The rabbinic teaching says that there is one day each year when Satan is bound and cannot touch a person. And that is the Day of Atonement. Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. In 2019, it's October 8th and 9th. I am not throwing a dart at a calendar. I'm just saying, I'm trying to describe. You can do your own research. I'm not saying anything specific will happen this particular day of atonement, Yom Kippur, but we'll see what happens on this or any other Yom Kippur that might start the ball rolling on what we're all waiting for. Let's keep going. A couple more slides. Stay <laughs> with me. Day of atonement. Satan can't touch a person. That'd be a nice time to leave, wouldn't it? And this is the book I took that screenshot out of Perry Stone, Breaking the Jewish Code. One other little thing in his book, the Torah is so holy. It's considered on the same level as a human being. And here in this paragraph down there, it says, once a Torah, if the ink is all becoming illegible, they don't throw it out or burn it or anything. They bury it in a cemetery like a person. The dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in life. The dead in Torah. The dead in the book of life. If you're written in the book of life, if you're written in the Torah, your scroll is part of the teachings for eternity. You think your life doesn't count? You have a book of life. We each have a book of life. The Torah in the synagogue is referred to as the book of life. Tree of life book, scroll, tree, in English, book, in Hebrew, scroll, in the idiom, tree of life. And Paul, here in the middle paragraph here, Paul wrote, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. But the Greek word for quick means alive. How do you find life? The word is alive, has Light that has mass. It has sound that has mass. It is alive. Water. Flowing water. <laughs> uh, all this is very exciting to me. I'm not saying Yom Kippur is when we all get to get out of here. But it sure would be nice. sure would be nice. And it makes sense to me today about it. So, draw whatever conclusions you would like. I'm going to um, do some personal study on why skipping eating on Yom Kippur is a big deal. But the fact that Jesus is on a fast until the marriage supper of the Lamb, I'm just going to accept that for now as the only explanation I'm getting. If I can find out anything else, I'll make a different video. All right? So there we go. There we go. The Torah is removed from the ark. The, <laughs> the scrolls of life are removed from the ark. The living word is removed. We as vessels of the Holy Spirit. Cup of wine. Jesus had a cup of wine before he got crucified. He even had, they tried to give him vinegar on the cross, didn't they? So my scroll of life will be sealed year to year. And when I'm raptured, I will be sealed. And when I was baptized in the name of Jesus, baptized in the name of Jesus, rather than being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you have to get baptized directly in the name of Jesus. You are sealed. That is how you get sealed. If you haven't been specifically baptized in the name of Christ, 
Doesn't matter how many other times you've been baptized, every other way, go, please, get a do-over. <laughs> do it specifically in the name of Christ only. Be baptized in water. If you did it in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you didn't, you missed the mark, unfortunately. We got taught wrong. We thought that's enough. But that, that little bit, Satan edges you to the left or to the right, rather doing, going down the center of the narrow, narrow, narrow path. <sighs> you can do plenty of research all by yourself, and I wish you would. And until we see each other in the air, leave me comments. <laughs> Thumbs ups and downs. Uh, share the video. Um, you could tag some additional research in your posts if you want to post links to things. Uh, YouTube likes to block things, but I've finally discovered where it hides messages so I can... Um, dig them out of the settings and uh, post comments. I just found one from three months ago. I'm like, I didn't even know it was there. YouTube, why are you hiding this interaction I'm trying to get? Ah, YouTube. So there we go. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we're all alive forever. And we'll be with him later. And that's the end of this one. Shalom, shalom. Bye-bye.